Welcome to my episode in this little substrate series and I am going to be doing weed fishing. Um, it's something which I know can frazzle people's heads a little bit, uh, cause a little bit of stress, especially when there's a lake like this one here, which I'll get onto in a bit, which is choked with weed. You know, you can't find a spot, you're struggling for a drop, you're struggling to present. Every time you're bringing that lead in, it's choked with horrible weed. And you know you're not presented, and I get it, that can cause stress. However, you know, it's something I thrive for in my fishing. I cannot stand a lake which is the opposite of this, which is just barren. Nothing there, you're getting drops everywhere. There's nothing which really excites me about that. So, you know, when I am fishing, I'd much rather a lake full of weed. You know, why am I doing that? Because, well, let's be frank, weed is full of food for the fish. It creates sanctuary for the fish. It's an amazing feature. And I think that, you know, even in those barren lakes when you can find a weed bed, it's something to fish to. It's something which is gonna attract those fish. So it's a feature which just cannot be ignored. Now, even these lakes, which are, you know, choked with weed, they can be tackled, they can be fished effectively. And hopefully through the next 10 minutes or so of this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how I approach it. We're at um, Billingford Lakes, but this lake in particular is called the John Wilson Lake. And uh, I've filmed on it a couple of times and I've always wanted to have a, have a go fishing it. Small intimate pool, but the reason I've come here is because it's really weedy. It doesn't look it. It looks like a, a deep old estate lake actually with these steep banks, but it's not, it's shallow. And the, I don't know if you see in the margins, but the, um, the bottom is covered in blanket weed. It's really, really weedy, really shallow, and there's some mega old fish in there. Um, so I thought it'd be a good place to come and show you guys how I approach a lake like this, where it is a right struggle to present. Um, so what I'm doing is, uh, the first thing I do is uh, I get out a leading rod. And you know, a shallow lake like this, I'm always gonna use a light lead to lead about with. Braid is essential for, for the leading rod. Um, so I've got spool of bar spot marker braid on here and a very small lead that's two ounces again because it's shallow um, I don't want a big heavy lead which is going to just plummet to the bottom I ain't going to feel anything I need to be able to really be able to feel exactly what's going on um, and then it's a case of I'll just take a cast hopefully I get a drop if I don't um, I'm just bouncing that lead back so I lift and just feel for a drop if I don't get a drop I know it's just gone back into more weed so I'm just lifting and plucking it back like that if I do get a drop I just drag it back a little bit that one's actually coming across blanket weed again and I just systematically go for it like this you know I know this is about fishing in weed and what I'm looking for when fishing in weed is a clear spot <laughs> you know I don't want to be fishing in the weed it's again it's all about presenting and if I can present on a clear spot in amongst the weed I know that's going to be my best chance of a fish seeing that hook bait or my bait and then me getting a bite. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, looking, I'm not looking for weed. I know there's weed out there. I'm looking for a clear spot. When I find something harder, I start to start to drag back. Maybe I'll put it in the clip and I'll explore it. But, you know, that hasn't happened just yet. I'm getting a lot of blanket weed. And like I say, I think that is the story of this lake. A lot of blanket weed. But we keep going. Keep flicking it out. Okay, right, so I'm ready to flick it out. Uh, real light lead, hinge rig, I'll go for it in a, in a little bit, how I set it all up, but it's pretty straightforward. But one thing I do do, it's all well and good testing your rig in the edge and just laying it on top of the weed, making sure that pop-up sits down nicely, but that doesn't really imitate how it is actually gonna enter the water. So I always, I've got loads of weed in front of me, I'll always bomb it in um, like a cast. Um, and make sure that it's going to present on top of that weed, even if it goes in with a little bit of force. Not that it's not just when it's laid down gently on top of it. Um, and this one, as I say, as I bomb that in, I can see the pop up just gently sits down on top of the weed. That's going into some quite thick weed as well. I make sure that it, it can deal with weed which is probably thicker than I'm fishing over. Um, and if it can deal with it here, then it's going to deal with it uh, when I flick out there. And then, in 
terms of baiting. I'm going quite light. I'm just flicking out a few half boilies. They're just 15 mil, I've just split them in half. And this way, when they flutter down, they just sit on top of the weed instead of uh, getting lost in amongst it. Okay, that's it, rods are sorted, they're rocking, they're out there. Um, and I didn't, I didn't find any clear, clear areas despite my best efforts, which I thought was gonna be the case here uh, on the John Wilson Lake at Billingford. I know it's incredibly shallow, and I know there's a lot of weed out there. Um, and you know what, I didn't wanna to go too hard um, trying to find that spot because there are carp out there. I scooted up a tree uh, and I could see a group of carp just mooching around in the open water, so I didn't wanna use the lead too much. But like I say, I'm always looking for that clear spot. When I'm, although this is a tutorial fishing in weed, um, it goes back to being presented. There's no more confidence I can have than being presented on a clear spot in amongst weed, whether it is that blanket weed or it's that big, thick Canadian weed. If I'm on a clear spot, there's a bit of bait around it. I know the fish can find it. I know they can find my hook bait and that's, that's the best chance of me getting a bite. But we're, as we all know, there are scenarios where you just can't find it. And I know you guys have been in that scenario where wherever you cast, you just put in that stringy, horrible weed from around your lead. Um, it doesn't mean fishing is impossible. Um, so this is why we're gonna look at how we, you tackle those different types of weed. So for the most part today, I'm dealing with the low lying stuff. You know, for me, it's probably the easiest to deal with. It only sits, you know, maximum a foot off the bottom and it's that blanket weed, it's that silk weed. There are areas out there which are a little bit thicker, I'll come on to them, um, but for two of the rods, I've gone for my ever faithful setup for when the, the weed is kind of low line and kind of more importantly than the rig is the leader setup and it's, it's a helicopter setup. That's 40 pound Klingon leader, a helicopter sleeve and a quick change clip so I can quickly change the lead should I need something a bit bigger or a bit smaller. And then a helicopter top bead there, which slides up and down. So the rig can slide up to that if needs be. And then also that bead will just pop off very, very easily, making it a very, very safe rig, should I get cut off. Going on to the rig again, as I say, it doesn't have to be a hinge. I like to use a hinge because it sits nice and proud um, of any debris or the weed. I don't want it to get pulled into anything, but that will just sit down and that trod section just sits up nice and high. However, It'll work with a Ronnie, it'll work with a multi-rig or a pop-up. I think the most important thing is that that bead is set to the correct depth, so that can slide up, and as long as that uh, pop-up is critically balanced, it'll just come down and sit nicely on top of any weed. For me, that means no matter how much blanket weed's out there, it's always relatively easy to present on top of it. Next up is that denser weed, you know, the stuff that will grow from bottom to top. It's the, the stuff which is really, really hard to find a spot in um, and you'll, you'll see it on the surface. Um, stuff like Canadian pond weed um, is probably the one that you'll encounter most. Um, and when I uh, find weed which is this thick um, and I can't find anywhere else and the fish are in and around it, um, I'll go for the ever faithful chod rig. There's not a lot of situations where this won't present. I like to fish it on a fluorocarbon leader if possible, especially on weedy venues. I think that fluorocarbon just sits down nicely um, and just disappears on top of that weed. Again, I've got that helicopter top bead to make it safe. That'll be able to move up and down depending on the thickness of the weed. So if it's really, really thick, I'll move it miles away so that choddy can slide right the way up there. Um, and so when the leg gets pulled down into the weed, it's always gonna be sat on top. And then again, underneath there, I've got a quick change link so I can put a lighter lead on or a heavier lead on, but I'll always fish the lightest lead as possible, you know, just to maintain that distance because when that's plugged into the weed, it will hold that weight anyway um, to help aid the hook in. But I don't want a really heavy lead, which is gonna plummet it down, pull everything down into the weed. So when the weed's really, really thick, you know, you've got two, three, four, five foot of weed, choddy is the one that I'll go for. And the last one, which is uh, my least favorite type of weed. Um, in terms of carp attraction, I think it's right up there. It's that stringy weed, that forest that grows up. This can be anything from eelgrass to onion weed. Um, I think the carp really, really like, you know, moving in and around it, feeding in it, using it as their habitat. 
um, but I think presenting in it can be really, really tricky. When you're casting out there, you're thinking, okay, sweet, I can get away, get away with quite a lot of rigs. You can't, you know, if you were to use a helicopter set up in eel grass, um, you're gonna get a really, really good drop, but then your hook's just gonna get caught up in the strands which, which grow vertically up, up, up the layers of the lake. So when faced with eelgrass, if I know the fish were there, firstly, I'll try and fish on the edge of it not in the middle of it. I'll always try and find the least dense part of it. Um, and then the secondly, I will use a solid bag. Solid bags are great for fishing in weed. Um, your hook's not gonna get caught up in anything. It's always just gonna bomb into the middle of it. The bag's gonna dissolve. It's gonna leave that parcel of bait and you're always gonna be presented. So not just eelgrass, any sort of weed. That's a really, really good tactic, but especially for the eelgrass where I can't rely on a choddy or a helicopter set up solid bag will be my go-to. Here's how I go about tying my stiff hinge rig. Firstly, cut a length of 30 pound chod link, roughly three to four inches. Then take a size four chod twister and attach that chod twister to the chod link using a knotless knot, leaving a long tag end at the top. Add a large rig ring to the tag end and pass the tag end back through the eye of the hook, creating a D-shaped loop. Carefully blob the tag end with a lighter, and this allows you to determine the size of the D-loop and stop the tag end being able to pass back through the eye. Then take a micro ring swivel and tie your chod section to the swivel using a two-turn blood knot. Moisten the knot and pull tight using rig puller tools. Now your chod section is complete. Take some 25 pound skin link, I personally prefer the semi-stiff version, and tie it to the ring of the micro ring swivel using a figure of eight loop knot. Another figure of eight loop knot at the other end finishes the rig. Steam the skin link over the kettle to strain it all out. Add some Klingon putty to the micro ring swivel to critically balance your pop-up. Then simply attach your pop-up to the rig ring using bait floss. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about when fishing in the weed is kind of the type of terminal tackle that I use. Um, I'll go through it sort of component by component, but weed typically is a very, very savage substrate to try and fish over or in. Um, it can be home to mussels, it can be home to structure. You know, some of those old lakes that have become completely engrossed in weed, there's old bits of wood or metal down there that the weed just grows around. And when you hook a fish and it's ploughed into the weed, typically you've got to put quite a lot of strain on that fish in order to get it out so it doesn't get stuck in the weed bed. And so because of that, I make sure my terminal tackle is up to the job. I do beef everything up a little bit when I fish in the weed. Just jumping onto the other setup that I've used on this session, it's the Chod Rig. As I said before, I'm fishing that on the fluorocarbon leader. That's actually our FluoroLink hook link material, and I'll use that in 20 or 25 pounds. Um, it is very coily when it comes off the spool, but all you need to do is uh, just give it a stretch. I just tie two knots in either end and just pull it. It doesn't take a lot, and that just stretches out lovely. It goes lovely and supple, but it also has that abrasion resistance, you know. If I was using a naked chod, I just wouldn't really trust it in thick weed, especially if there was structure down there or zebra mussels, which are quite often housed in the weed. Um, that gives me ultimate confidence. Again, that's a uh, 30 pound chod link section, just like the hinge, it's just beefed up a little bit and a size four chod twister uh, is my hook of choice. Just to finish that rig off again, like I said earlier, naked gripping chod kit and that setup's completed with the naked helicopter top bead. The most important thing for me when fishing in weed is to make sure I'm gonna get those fish in safely. So to do that, I need to make sure that I've got 100% confidence in all my end tackle, and that's why I do jump everything up a little bit. It's all completed by using 20 pound bullet mono. You know, I jump up to that 20 pound when I'm fishing those weedy environments. Again, just for that safety aspect, just for that confidence aspect. And I know when I get a fish in, in, stuck in the weed, that if I've got that 20 pound bullet mono, it's just the, um, the kind of the safety barrier I need to know that I can just give it some to, to get it out of the weed. So there's a few hints, tips and tricks when it comes to fishing in weed and how I approach a weedy venue. I hope there's something there that you might find useful and you'll take away and pop into your own fishing.